Welcome to Chris's Storytelling Corner. This is Christopher Moldong. Today, I'm going to do a manga review of Dawn of the Arcana, Volumes 10 to 13, which will finish the series. In two weeks, I'll begin the next manga re review with Your Lie in April. A uh, great series about music, adolescence, love, loss, growing up, and um, yeah, it, it's a tearjerker for sure. And uh, I, if you haven't read Your Lie in April or watched the anime, I'd greatly recommend to uh, check it out in some form. Great 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 series but definitely a sad one as well be sure to check out my list of reluctant protagonists in movies next time i'll have a movie review for wonder woman and a short story reading of the next level here is the synopsis for the next level roger Molini plays the video game evercraft alone all day when an uninvited guest Maddie Adderbox starts joining him on his online adventures. Roger meets her in real life and goes to the homecoming dance with her. What will happen to these two social outcasts? You can check out my author's website at www.chrismoldong.com. You can buy my first novel, a fantasy adventure called The Muster Prince in the Condiment Kingdom, for $4.99. Also, for $2.99, you can buy my short story collection, a collection of 10 short stories and a horror, fantasy, and realistic fiction genres. Check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Links to all these will be provided on the description. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube, or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. So the way that this is going to work is I'm going to do a recap of volume 10, give my thoughts on that volume, then do the same for 11, 12, and 13. This will be the last manga review for Dawn of the Arcana. So let's get started on volume 10. The volume begins with Akil telling Azal to flee. Nakaba tells them that she has something that they need to discuss. They all escape in the dark and end up in an empty city. They end up at the road where Nakaba saw one of the princes die. Vital's men finds them. Nakaba tells Akil to hide behind some rocks. Azal says that he'll lure them away. Nakaba has to choose whether she grabs Akil's arm to save him or not. Before Azal goes, he tells her it's alright. And Nakaba grabs Akil's arm. Akil wants to run after his brother, but Loki knocks him out. Uh, Nakaba tells Loki to take him. And, uh, or take him away. In a flashback, Nakaba wants to speak to Akil and Azal alone. Nakaba tells Akil to leave, and he does. Uh, Nakaba admits to Azal that she's seen the future and knows what will happen, and the choice she has to make. Azal tells Nakaba to please take care of Akil. Then, Azal dies. In a boat back to Senen, Akil questions why Nakaba couldn't see, the, uh, see that particular future. He then realizes that she did. Rito asks Nakaba about saving his mother. Nakaba says she'll find a way to save her um, if it's possible. Loki, uh, Loki approaches Nakaba and Nakaba tells him that she's going to take control of Senen. Caesar, Bellinus, and Lemuria return to Balquat. Bellinus tells Caesar to trust that he knows what he's doing. Caesar's mother presents Louise to Caesar and tells them that the two will be married. Caesar and Louise get married as Nakaba watches their coronation. Nakaba then goes through a door and it's revealed that Caesar and Louise have been married for three uh, for three months. Um, so it was like three months ago that they were married in that timeline. It's revealed that Nakaba is now married to Adele. Nakaba says that there's an avalanche coming to Oma soon, which is a town in Senen, and that she'll evacuate the residents. Nakaba reveals that she used her eyes to make a bargain. She demonstrated the Arcana's power and persuaded the king that she could help fight, help him in fighting against Belquad. The price on that help was the release of Rito's mother, Rina, and allowing her to marry Adele. She'll use it to her advantage. 
And the Kaaba uses the Arcana to look into Caesar. And she tells him that she still loves him, but he can't hear her. Uh, and the Kaaba wonders about her father and uses the Arcana of Time. She enters a row of doors that would reveal her past, but they are all locked. Adele and the Kaaba are in the same room together. Adele forces a kiss on her and forces himself on her. She cries and he loses interest and leaves. Loki and Nakaba go to Oma to evacuate the villagers. Nakaba uses Arcana and sees that there's still someone left in a tunnel behind the village. It's more like a cave. A boy named Tio tells Nakaba that his friend is still in town. Nakaba says that it's a girl with rabbit ears. Loki reveals that having a child with blood from both races is forbidden. Nakaba says that she's going to save the, the girl. At the end of the volume, Loki and Nakaba ride off on horses to save her. So, some thoughts on volume 10. Uh, Azal died. That's uh, pretty unfortunate. You know, Azal seemed like a good guy. Akil liked him. And it looks like Batal is now the ruler of Lithuano. They have since fled Lithuano. So, I don't know if Batal is still going to be around. I mean, they are across the sea. Or if they're going to be left alone or what. Um, what that does mean, though, is that, um, they couldn't get the Letna, obviously, but Nakaba did find a way to, uh, free Rito's mother anyways, and get into a higher position of power, so that's going to be really interesting moving forward, how that's going to work. The Arcana of Time now has this corridor of locked doors. We don't know what's behind them, and we don't know what they reveal. Um, I have to question if eventually these doors will be open and what they're going to show, but for now, it's still something of a mystery. Uh, Caesar married Louise. Uh, I guess it's to be... I was actually a bit surprised by that because, you know, Caesar like, clearly loves Nakaba. But then it really surprised me that Nakaba married Adele, too. So I was like, and Nakaba does not like Adele at all, you know? Uh, so that really surprised me. And Adele doesn't, isn't exactly, you know, that friendly with her either. He, he would actually per, uh, persecute her quite a bit. But... You know, both of them are making moves. Now they're, uh, like, the true princess and slash prince of their respective country. So they're getting closer and closer to that throne. The combo, though, obviously still loves Caesar. Um, she's kind of torturing herself <laughs> because, like, to see him using their kind of time to see the coronation and whatnot, she knows that Caesar, you know, married Louise, and, um, it kind of sucks for her. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I just don't know what else to say. You know, it's, it's unfortunate for her. Hopefully that they'll somehow get back together. But right now they are kind of worlds apart at the moment. And it looks like this volume is going to end with saving this girl with the bunny ears. She looks like an Ajin, I guess, or like a halfling or something. I, I can't really tell. Um... But, you know, it will lead to some form of danger and, and whatnot. But uh, we'll see how, you know, Nakaba deals with it and uh, see, you know, if she can beat the avalanche pretty much. So, volume 11. The volume begins with three kids talking about a monster living in the forest behind the village. One of those kids is Tio. The kids find a shack and enter it. Uh, the two kids with Tio run away but Tio remains so Tio finds a girl with rabbit ears and she was a taboo child but Tio names her Lala the current day Tio questions the adults why they don't save her and he's told that she's a taboo child the Kaba tell um, back with Nakaba, the Kaba tells Loki to wait for her as she goes to the cave. The Kaba finds Lala and she has enhanced hearing revealing that she has an arcana you know, related to, like, hearing very well. Uh, Lala reveals that she loves Tio. Uh, Loki and another person run to where Nakaba is. Then Nakaba gets caught up in the avalanche and is buried. She uses the arcana to see Caesar. 
Uh, however, uh, Loki saves and resuscitates Nakaba in the avalanche. He tells her that Lala is fine. Nakaba looks at his eyes and sees that they're red, or sees that one of them's red. Loki admits that he knew all of it, and it's revealed that he too has the Arcana of Time. Loki reveals that he brought Gadi to assist him. Nakaba and Lala go back to where the villagers are. Tio runs to Lala, but she ignores him. Nakaba whispers to Tio to send word to her if he ever comes to the capital. Nakaba takes Lala with her. Uh, she also realizes that Loki is a taboo child born from a human and Ajin. Nakaba uses the Arcana and sees Loki in the place in the corridor doors. Loki reveals that his power awakened a few years after they came to Senen Castle. He has been running through the corridors, peering into the past and future, and he ch always chose the best path that he felt um, during certain situations. Back in Balquat, Caesar is informed by Balanus and that Nakaba was caught in an avalanche. Balanus tells Caesar that they will have a trail fade in Frank's cell, and people from Senen will be there. Adele tells Nakaba of the trade fair, and Nakaba wants to go, and Adele agrees. Nakaba realizes that Lu Loki knew that she would be drawn to Caesar, so Nakaba, Loki, Adele, and Lala go to the trade fair. It's revealed that Lala is now Nakaba's attendant, and Lala and Nakaba then wander off alone. Lala looks like she's not feeling well, and they go back to their lodgings. Nakaba and Lala sneak out. Uh, Lala takes uh, Nakaba to where Caesar is. Uh, it's pretty much revealed that Lala was just actually using her advanced hearing. Caesar and Nakaba see each other. Louise approaches Caesar, and Adele appears and takes Nakaba back to their lodgings. Back in Belquat Castle, Caesar is in a foul mood. In Senen Castle, Nakaba is unhappy. Adele comes in the room and tells Nakaba that the king has collapsed. Adele is concerned for his father, but Nakaba reveals that she feels nothing towards him. Um, away from, the ch from Adele and his father, Loki tells Nakaba that this is her opportunity for her to seize the Senen throne. Nakaba goes to the tower and looks out the window. She sees Adele looking up at the, looking up at the window. Adele goes, Adele goes to the room and speaks with Nakaba and compliments her. He falls asleep on her lap as she's sitting. Adele leaves and Nakaba questions whether she is able to betray him. Loki speaks with Akil. Excuse me. Uh, Loki says that his role is to do the things that Princess Nakaba cannot. Nakaba has a dream of... Uh, with Adele on the floor at Loki's feet. Nakaba uses the Arcana and sees Loki killing Adele. She goes through another door and sees something else. Nakaba then asks Adele to pay the king a visit, and they do. In the king's bedchamber, Nakaba takes Adele down and puts a dagger to his throat. She tells the king to pass the, th the crown to her uh, when he dies instead of Adele. If he doesn't, She'll kill Adele. The king agrees and puts it to writing in a will and gives it to Nakaba. Adele asks what she plans to do with the country, and, and she tells him that she plans to transform it. In a room, Loki asks why she chose this path. She tells him that he, uh, she won't allow him to become an animal. At the end of the volume, the king dies and Nakaba takes the throne. So... Thoughts on Volume 11, we're introduced to Lala, she has the arcana of hearing, I suppose. She's a taboo child, a, a child of a human and an Ajin. Um, I don't know if she has any other type of great power, but um, otherwise, it, it just goes to show that that is indeed a thing, you know, that there are taboo child, children out there, humans and Ajin have gotten together in the past and have had children. So, uh, that's all really with that. Uh, Loki's reveal that he has the Arcana of Time, that, um, that would kind of, ex I don't know if that explain a lot per se, because he did, he, did a, he did a very good job of hiding it. 
you know, um, he is the type of guy, though, that seemed to always be at the right place at the right time. So I guess if you look back, maybe there are some occasions where it's like, oh, how did he end up here? Now it's like, oh, okay, it's, it's the arcana of time. Um, obviously, certain things played out, but, you know, he said that, like, he, he did what he felt was the best choice. So, you know, it's like, maybe he couldn't save us all, you know, <laughs> I suppose, or something else happened. Um, but... Uh, you know, I, I kind of have to wonder how that's going to affect the story going forward. That's a, Loki was already, is already a very powerful, uh, character, you know, strength wise. So now, you know, he has a kind of time so that, you know, this guy has a lot of power at the moment. Um, but still, you know, is pretty much Nakaba's servant. Um, Nakawa, though, man, you know, uh, it's pretty surprising that she betrayed Adele, who has seemed to have fallen in love with her. That was a bit of a surprise, too, that Adele fell for Nakawa, despite the fact that he tormented her so, so much. But he, he is very much like Caesar, and Caesar ended up, ended up falling for Nakawa as well. Um, Caesar seems to like her because she encourages him she's i think he can kind of see her strength adele i would assume is kind of in that same boat um but it was a bit of a surprise to see nakaba uh betray her because it's not really we haven't seen that side of her of her yet so um you know loki was a guy that does that type of stuff but Nakaba seemed quite remorseless about doing it, you know, doing this stuff as well. And it was for something of a greater good. So, um, but still, quite a surprise there. Uh, Nakaba and Caesar briefly met. It doesn't really say much, except that they, the two clearly love each other. You know, symbolically, they're still separated by other circumstances you know louise with us was with caesar adele was with nakaba and there's space between them you know i mean it's very much a symbolic of their current situation belquat and senin you know the space between them and then they have their royal obligations and their own spouses and whatnot uh but you know at the end of the day nakaba has reached the throne you know caesar hasn't done that yet but King Morris of Senin died, and now Nakaba is ruling Senin. Uh, that should be interesting because she's really sympathetic to like the Ajin, for example, uh, and she wants to re make some real changes. She's also very strong too, but she doesn't have like the desirable hair color. So that should be really interesting to see how this this works moving forward. And also, I mean, Nakaba rules Senin. And Caesar wants to rule Belquat, but those two uh, countries are at odds with, or nations are at odds with each other. So, you know, I got to kind of wonder how that's going to play out as well. So on to volume uh, 12. The volume begins with Leo showing Nakaba that he's able to mount a Letna sword with his Arcana of Fire. Akil tells them that Belquat is most likely using individuals with the Arcana of Fire, sacrificing Sacrificing them below Belquat. They're probably Ajin. <laughs> Excuse me. The Belquat king, queen, and Caesar are told that Nakaba is the ruler of Senin. King Garan uh, orders his, uh, his army to be dispatched to Senin. General Douglas will lead the forces. Caesar is to land the first blow and to, and to go into Senin and seize a town as a declaration of war. Nakaba uses the arcana and knows that Caesar is coming. She tells Loki that Belquat is preparing to move against them. Caesar and, so and some troops head for Senin. In a camp, a soldier asks if ask um, Caesar if he really wants to fight, and Caesar says that he doesn't. 
uh, the troop tells them this line, offer no threat to other nations and bring the stories of war to an end, um, which is presumably said by Caesar to the soldiers. Caesar wanders off alone and hears something. Nakaba appears and meets up with him. Nakaba tells Caesar that she knows what's happening and that he's planning to start a revolution. She says that she's there to give him a hand. In a monologue, Caesar reveals that he's declaring war on his father. Nakaba uses the arcana and sees Loki in the corridor doors. She goes and looks into King Garan's past. So, now we're looking into the past. So, in the town of Belquat, Garan accidentally bumps into Cain's mother, Sarah, and gets covered in flour. She asks him for money for the flour. He gives her a button of real gold. He tells her that her hair is the perfect shade. At uh, Sarah's shop, Garan uh, pays her a visit. She is wearing the button as a necklace and didn't, and didn't sell it. They have tea and bread together. In bed, Garan tells uh, Sarah that he can't see her anymore. He reveals her that he is the nation's king. He admits to loving her and not wanting her to get involved. Uh, pretty much involved with him and all the political mess. He then leaves. In the forest in front of the castle, Sarah meets with uh, Garan and tells him to take her away. Garan tells the higher officials that he wants to be with a commoner and convinces them that it's fine. Sarah gets pregnant. Later, she gives uh, birth to Cain. The king is informed that there's a prisoner from Senan that can make accurate prophecies. He may have the power of the Arcana. Sarah becomes ill and bedridden. In the throne room, the king is presented with the prisoner. He prophesies that Sarah, Sarah will pass away soon and a new life will be born. Sarah dies, and Garan orders to kill the prisoner. He shows the prisoner that he has killed all the prisoners that were with him. Uh, the prisoner tells King Garan that Balquat will be destroyed by one of the two princes. King Garan kills that prisoner. Uh, King Garan gets a report that they know the village where the prisoner came from. He orders to eradicate that power. Uh, back in the present, Nakaba asks Caesar what type of person his father was. He tells her that he was a king, but, but not a father, and that they barely spoke. Nakaba then tells Caesar that she has the arcana of time. Balanus goes over their strategy. He says that their only target is the king of Belquat. They'll declare war on the three cities closest to the capital. Meanwhile, they'll target the palace. They'll attack by sneaking in the palace from beneath Belquat, uh, where the Latina blades are being produced. The next day, Loki, Nakaba, and Caesar enter a chapel where the passageway is hidden inside. Loki comes inside and is greeted by an Ajin priest. The priest then attacks him. With the help of Nakaba and Caesar, Loki stabs the priest. In a surprise attack, the priest gets up and tries to attack Loki, but Caesar blocks him and Loki kills the priest. Nakaba, Caesar, and Loki interrupt the king's dinner with his wife, Louise, and two others. Caesar asks his father to abandon his course of action. His father tells him to draw his sword. Caesar and his father fight. Nakaba asks the king if Sarah would want this for him. He realizes that she has the arcana of time and says she's a monster. Caesar declares that what changed him wasn't the power, but his own weakness. Caesar then slays King Garan. At the end of the volume, Loki asks Nakaba to hand Senen over to him. Thoughts on the second to the last volume, volume 12. Got to know a little bit about King Garan's past. One thing I'm always fond of is the multi-layered villain, you know. For the longest time, King Garan was pretty much just this evil, uncaring man. It's it's nice to see how he turned out that way, and that he started out as a good man, a good, loving man, who honestly went against policy. You know, black hair was the in thing, and, you know, and you have to have black hair to be royalty, and he went after someone who was blonde, so he can actually, he was actually able to look past the 
I guess that I don't know if it's like prejudice or discrimination or, or whatnot or um uh I guess the inferiority of non black hairs, you know. Uh it's kinda sad too, you know, that how everything kinda happened. It, it's at the end of the day he kinda just brought it upon himself at the same time. You know, it's it Sarah's gonna die regardless of whether this this uh prisoner predicted it or not, you know. Um but he still blamed the prisoner. He blamed the power of the Akana. And he just went to a downward spiral because of it. Sarah was an interesting character. She's pretty much... Um, I want to almost say happy-go-lucky. You know, headstrong type. I liked her character, you know. She can stand up to the king. Um, but is still, like, really kind-hearted and, and whatnot. But, like is can also be fiercely independent as well uh it's, it's kind of sad because like sarah and kane were actually like kane was just misguided by the end of it all but like they were like good people and, and they died you know and it, it's just pretty sad because um you know it, it really brought torment to King king garan um we got to see Nakaba and Caesar meeting up again. I gotta say that was a bit anticlimactic, and in my opinion, I, I was kind of expecting their meeting to be a little more, just to have a little more conflict, to you know, a little more obstacle and trial for them to meet. But it's just kind of like, hey, uh, you know, I'm gonna take a walk. Hey, oh my God, it's Nakaba. Hey, you know, like that's. Like, that was it. There's no conflict for them to meet. It was just like, hey, I'm here. Okay, cool. I'm going to help you out. Cool. You know, it's like, wow, that was, like I said, anticlimactic. I, I would have personally liked them to maybe be forced to fight against each other as they are a part of opposing nations and, or, or something to that nature instead of just kind of like this easy, like, Hey, I'm here. I'm going to help you. Cool, we're together again. Yay. You know? It's like they're apart for so long and all this, like, madness kind of happened with Caesar marrying Louise, Nakaba marrying Adele, Nakaba taking the throne, and it was like some big obstacle, you know, for to reach, you know, a certain point. And then when they meet again, it's like there's there's no obstacle, you know, that... I just kind of felt that that was a missed opportunity. Um, not the worst thing, but nonetheless, it is something, you know, that I, I would have liked to see it a little more played out. Caesar killed his father, you know, no love lost there. <laughs> That's the other thing, too. It didn't seem like Caesar had any qualms about killing his father, you know. Caesar is now the king, you know. There's some real struggle to reach to this point, though. You know what I mean? It's It wasn't easy for Caesar to, to reach this point and eventually become king. Uh, but, you know, he, he had to marry Louise. He had to depart from Nakaba, you know, eventually kill his father. There was some real, like, hardship for Caesar to reach this point to become the ruler of Belquat. So he finally did it. And, and But what should happen? Loki is now asking for Senin. So this is interesting. I guess it kind of ends the love triangle too. I think the love triangle kind of ended a while back. But this like officially, you know, burns it to the ground. You know, Caesar is with Nakaba. Loki, I guess this is kind of, this could be his way of just like, yeah, I'm getting my own thing now. You know what I mean? You got Nakaba. Cool. I'm out. You know, give me Senin. You know, so that's, that's, uh, we'll see what happens because honestly, the main conflict, the main evil, which was Caesar's father is now gone. So there's really, you know, we're, we're off to the next volume and, you know, it's something of a cliffhanger. I don't know what this means as far as Loki as a character. Is he going to be the antagonist? 
uh, or, or what, you know? Um, so, let's just go get right into it, though. Final volume, volume 13. The volume begins with Loki questioning how they expect to make humans and Ajin equal. Loki tells Nakava that he'll move the, the humans from Senin into Belquat and the Ajin from Belquat into Senin. He questions how so much oppression can be forgotten in the name of peaceful coexistence. Loki admits that he has no desire to live alongside humans with equality. Caesar and Loki fight, but Loki wins easily. He tells Caesar that if Nakaba is wounded, then he can heal her. Um, uh, excuse me. Uh, Loki pretty much asks Nakaba, doesn't really ask her, but like just kind of says like, hey, is, is Sen in mine? And he doesn't even say that. But she reluctantly agrees to pretty much give Loki sen uh, Senin, and Loki bids his farewell to her. Nakaba, Caesar, Caesar's mother, Louise, and other officials discuss relocating the Ajin of Belquat to Senin. Caesar's mother calls it nonsense. Louise tells her that she's giving Nakaba her place as King Caesar's wife. She pretty much admits that she loves Cain. She has grown to love Cain and doesn't want to forget his memory. Later, um, Adele is now living in Belquat in the castle. He argues with Lemuria. Uh, Belquat is now known as Bella Seely. Caesar and Nakaba remarried. Bellinus is Caesar's most trusted advisor. Akil uses his insight and cleverness, and the laws have changed. Um, Loki now rules Senin, but never gave the nation a name. It's home only to the Ajin, and is remote, untouchable, and secluded. It has no relations with other nations. Um, Akil also, he says something that pretty much says that Batal is not in uh, control of Lithuano anymore. So, that, I guess, that storyline kind of got brushed off, <laughs> I, I suppose. Um, so Nakaba never used the Arcana of Time. Um, Nakaba goes into town and buys some apples. Caesar gets her, but she suddenly drops the apples, saying that she thought she heard something. Later, Nakaba is in her room. Akil runs in and says that there's a visitor. The visitor is an older Rito. Rito gives her a document and tells Nakaba that Loki has passed away. He apparently used his arcana too much. Nakaba faints and appears in the corridor of doors from the arcana of time. She looks for Loki and finds a door that was once locked to be unlocked. She sees the past with her mother, Stesha, and her red-haired father. It's revealed that Nakaba's father is an Ajin, making Nakaba half-human, half-Ajin, or a taboo child. It's revealed that Loki is Nakaba's brother. Uh, because, uh, uh, it, yeah, Loki then meets the baby Nakaba for the first time. Nakaba's father tells Loki that he must keep things secret, especially if he travels elsewhere. He can't reveal that Nakaba is his sister, since Loki has Ajin features and Nakaba has human features. They both would be killed. Loki is told to tell people that he's Nakaba's servant. Loki tells them that he'll protect Nakaba. We're then shown Loki in Senen Castle after the attack on his village. And he can't tell the king that he's his grandson and that he's all alone. Loki speaks with the king and the king strongly hints that he knows that Loki is his grandson. In a monologue, Loki admits that Nakaba is the only thing that he loves, but he loathes her as well. Loki will take revenge on this lonesome world. So Nakaba is in bed and isn't waking up. Akil tells everyone that her life could be at risk if she remains snared in the world of time. Nakaba realizes how lonely she made Loki feel. Lamaria feels Nakaba's sadness while Nakaba is asleep. It's revealed that Loki was the one who locked the doors. She hears the sound of a door unlocking because Loki died. Nakaba 
sees Loki with a blade and asks him to kill her in the uh, corridor doors. She grabs a blade but tells him that she can't die yet. Uh, presumably because like Caesar keeps calling out to her and it seems like she might be hearing it. Loki then disappears. Nakava then sees a wolf who uh, leads her to, the, to a door who is presumably Loki, that wolf. He, uh, she sees Loki on the sin and throw speaking with Rito. Rito suggests that they all live together, human and Odin. Loki tells him that they'll keep fighting and hurting each other. He then says that uh, they need time. Nakaba goes through another door and sees Loki collapse in the snow. He says that he's home. So he's actually in like the home village, but it's like just covered in snow now. He admits that he wanted to protect Nakaba, but because of his pride, he hurt her terribly. He also admits that he sometimes hated her for her ignorance, but he always loved her. Caesar keeps calling out to her, and she eventually wakes up. Nakaba reads the like note uh, from Loki that was given to her by Arito. It says, I am returning Senin to Queen Nakaba. Caesar and Nakaba declare to the citizens that the nations will become one and that human and Ajin will live side by side with neither race standing above the other. At the end of the volume, there's a message that says, we hope that our first step will lead us into the light of the dawn. We see pictures of uh, various characters, Order Rito, um, I think Lemuria and, and whatnot. Um, Oh yeah, Tio with Lala. It's another picture, and whatnot. And finally, we see a picture of Caesar and what looks like a pregnant Nakaba. So thoughts on the final volume, volume thirteen. This volume was all about Loki. He took over Senin, and um, he had just reason to do so. He, at the end of the, it all, you know, I asked him. Uh, <clears throat> with volume 12, is he going to become the antagonist? In a sense, he was the antagonist, but he wasn't a physical antagonist. He did not physically attack any of the characters, but he like was deeply, deeply hurting Nakaba just by not being there. And you know, when he died and whatnot, he was like, he, he was hurting her. He, um, so in that sense, Loki kind of was the final antagonist of Dawn of the Arcana, if you think about it. Um, you know, there was a, a slight blurb that, like, Batal wasn't in power anymore, and it's like, it, it, I, I don't know what to feel about that, because it's, it's just kind of like, you kind of slip that under the rug, you know? It, it's just kind of like... You know, they have the Letna. I mean, they, they didn't really have the knowledge and, and whatnot to use the Letna to make blades and whatnot. But it's like he was an antagonist that was still there. I, I kind of wish they, you know, they did something with that storyline because the guy is still there. But uh, I guess there wasn't just enough time, I guess, or, or enough pages to really fit him in there. Um, and overall, and, and, and as far as impact goes anyways, as far as a final, you know, uh, like, Vital would just be kind of like a throwaway antagonist anyways, you know, he doesn't have, um, Elahe with him anymore, presumably, and so it's just kind of like, he would just kind of be there to cause trouble, but like, you know, his power isn't is a bit limited anyway so I guess it's not a big deal and like I said it gives room for Loki to be like the final antagonist of the story in a sense it's kind of still a protagonist but kind of an antagonist as well um the big reveal that Loki is Nakaba's sibling was you know if you look back it was it's there, you know, it's like, oh, okay, that's why he's so attached to her and whatnot. You know, it, it did reach, like, levels of incestual love, though. <laughs> um, but I guess at the end of the day, you know, 
ancestral romantic love. I guess at the end of the day, all those scenes where you saw Loki and whatnot, like, seemingly wanting to, like, hold her, touch her, or whatever, was just because he was her brother and maybe he wanted to tell her that, and he couldn't. Um, but yeah, that was a, a big reveal. It also just kind of reveals that, like, Nakaba is a, a, a taboo child as well. She's half Ajin, half human. Uh, this volume really went into Loki's loneliness throughout the whole ordeal. And I, I'm, that's a really strong theme right there, to, um, or a strong idea to really delve into. Because it's like, yeah, you know, this guy had to travel with Nakaba. His parents died. He just kind of wanted to be left alone. He went through all this hardship. He can't even tell his sister that he's they're related. And he can't even tell his grandfather that they're related. So, I mean, the guy just kind of loved... He lived this, like, indentured, servant, vagrant life, you know, of loneliness. So, I can understand why he'd want to do what he did at, at the very end of all and, and kind of get, like, revenge on the whole world and whatnot. He did bring all the Ajin together. Um, but, yeah, you know, it, it's pretty sad, like, the fact that he died, you know, it was, it was really sad, and he died quite suddenly, too, you know, um, it's also sad that he didn't die, he died before Nakaba was able to meet up with her again, you know, you, you would, you would think that they'd, like, meet up somewhere in between, but they don't, and instead of, like, her being there when he died it's just kind of like Rito comes in and it's like hey he died like oh my god like what <laughs> that just happened you know um it's pretty sad too uh and like I said Loki was pretty much one you know really multi-layered character you know he, he he had you know a lot of different emotion a lot of suffer experienced a lot of suffering. He was pretty much like the strongest character here, you know, as far as physical strength. He was very smart, you know, very capable. He also had the Arcana, uh, but you know, he is also the most, um, you know, the the character that faced the most struggle as well. Uh, Nakaba, you know, found out the truth, and uh, man, you know, she. She almost died finding out the truth in a sense, but, uh, you know, it, it reveals a lot. I, I gotta say that this volume really put Caesar kind of in the back burner. Um, it, this was really the Loki show with Nakaba. Nakaba was still a big deal here, but yeah, I'll, you know, like Caesar really was kind of just in the back burner. I mean, he was just calling out for Nakaba throughout the whole volume pretty much. Um, but I mean, he did his thing, you know, in the last volume by killing killing the king, so it's just kind of like, okay, like, you know, he killed the king, <laughs> like, so it, it just, there wasn't anything for else, for him else to do, um, and, and finally, just some thoughts on, on Dawn of the Arcana manga in general, you know, they, they really got this theme of, like, this discrimination against the Ajin, against people with different hair, and, and whatnot, they really laid that in thick for, like, a fantasy adventure type of uh, story um, it fit in well you know uh, with all the characters and how it ended too you know with with um, Loki wanting to separate from the humans and, and have their own land um, it, it started out as something more of just a political fantasy adventure type but you know it slowly stuck with this kind of idea and eventually it just kind of ran with it in a sense I mean there was like a love thing going on and, and whatnot but at the end of the day as you go further and further into into the uh, the manga it, it's just more apparent how like the gold hair the black hair the red hair and whatnot and how 
you know, there's inferiority there, and then with the humans on the Ajin, and then there's half humans and half Ajin and whatnot. Um, it just kind of came to a head uh, by the end of it all. And, you know, it makes sense. You know, I, I think that it made sense. I thought it was well done. Overall, you know, I, I think it's a good manga. You know, I, I don't know if I'd put it in one of those, like, oh, my God, type, you know, great manga. But it was a fun read, uh, for sure. Very enjoyable. Very easy to read, too. Um, like the art, you know, good action. I like adventure, so that was really good, too. So, overall, you know, I... I I definitely find Dawn of the Arcana to be a very solid series, and um, yeah, you know, it, it's I guess it's just on to the next one. So that's all for today. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube, or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. Thank you for listening to this manga review. Next time, I will have a movie review for Wonder Woman, a reading of The Next Level, and in two weeks, I'll start the manga reviews for Your Lie in April. Thank you, and until next time.